Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to New Brit Workshop. You may recall that recently I made a video about the new UJK Path Protractor. And in making that video, I made a demonstration shape and this is a Decagon. I'd also made a Pentagon prior to that. So I had this idea to make a tool tidy and it's very, very simple. And if I bring it up close, you'll see exactly what I've done. Uh, this is the uh, pentagon here, which I then cut uh, some of the corners off to make it into a decagon. Uh, and I've now created uh, this 10-sided uh, container, which goes on top. And there are some magnets here, so you can fix tools. And inside you can put other tools to keep them tidy. And at the very centre, there's a little handle to carry the whole thing around. And I do regret not making a, a video about the construction of this uh, because actually I, I'm quite pleased with it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the key points of how to make something like this. It's dead easy and you need a miter saw. And the essence of this container is being able to cut the individual pieces on here, and the ten of them all together, uh, to make this ten-sided container. And you can use whatever you like as the base, but it's this bit I'm going to show you how to make now. The first thing is to get your stock, and the stock has to be absolutely parallel. And if I measure this here, it's 115.10, and here it's 115.08. <laughs> so it's, uh, I reckon that's close enough for government work. So I've got my stock. And now what I'm going to do is set up the mitre saw so that I can cut some angles. Now, if you want to create something with a different number of sides, you divide 360 by that number, and then whatever you get, divide it by 2. So in my case, I want 10 sides, so that's 360 divided by 10, so that's 36. And then I'm going to set the capex at a bevel angle of 18 degrees, which is half of 36. Now with the capex it's very easy, all I do is release the uh, clamp here and then I rotate this and I'm looking for 18 degrees. That's 15, 16, 17, 18. And this really is super accurate and so that's set on 18 degrees. Now having set the uh, bevel angle the next thing to do is to put a distance piece at the back and I've got it on both sides, two pieces of wood the same thickness. And the reason for that is that uh, when you're cutting at a, a, a bevel angle, uh, your fence is going to have a gap here. But you want your stock to be supported, and the pieces of stock we're cutting are relatively thin. And so, therefore, uh, you've got to have something that bridges the, the gap there, hence the two pieces of wood. The very first cut is going to be my trim cut at the required angle. So that's that trimmed at that 18 degree angle. Now, my next thing to do is to work out how large a segment I need. Now for my stop, I've cut another piece of this thin stuff. It could be anything you like really, but I put that same angle there. And this time I'm gonna put this uh, the other way up. And the reason for that is that when I then bring my piece of wood up against here, it's mating completely with the angled face on this piece of wood. So I've got to make a judgment how wide I want my pieces to be and I think that's about where I want them to be. So I'm going to lock that off. Belt and braces just here. Lock that in place. That's there. I've got my distance piece there. This one's free to move uh, so I'm happy with that. And now I can do some cuts. So here we go. Up against there, everything's nice and solid. Nothing's going to move. That's pushed against the back. Let the capex come to a halt. Lift. And there's my first piece. And you can see it's got an equal angle, 18 degrees on each side. Next thing we're going to do is take this piece of wood it was like that, and I'm going to rotate it so it fits underneath here nicely. My little stops in place. Stop 
And there's my second piece. And remember, rotate this over so it then fits in to our stop and we continue the process. And there are my 10 pieces. Let's now go over to the bench. Next thing we're going to do is with these pieces, with the wide side uppermost, we're going to place them between a pair of straight edges and push them up together so they're touching. Now, in order to make sure they stay touching, one can put a little clamp across here and another one across here. This just makes it a little bit better because you've got to guarantee that these pieces are all in a straight line. So that's that, that's that. So they're in a straight line, they're all touching. I'm happy with that. I'm now going to get some masking tape and I'm going to put a run of masking tape all the way along here. Just move that over a bit. That's out of my way. One piece. One piece at this end here. And a piece in the middle. Okay. And I now need to just make sure my masking tape is firmly stuck to the wood. So there we have that and you can probably see that when one rolls it up like this it will come together into the shape that we're after. So unwind it and let's put some glue along these joint lines. Now I've made many of these in my time and the actual secret is of course you've got to have a, a very accurate mitre saw uh, but the other secret is to use this technique with the masking tape to bring it all together. Put glue along there and then I'm going to bring this together and I now need another piece of masking tape. So I've got a piece here, I'm going to put it in the middle, I'm going to bring this together and then fix that piece of masking tape in place. That's that, and I need two more pieces of masking tape. One there. And one at the top end here. That's it. So there's that uh, piece and I'm going to leave that glue uh, to dry. Now I'll try and bring this in as close as I can so you can really inspect those joints. They're pretty good really aren't they? So it's a ten sided vessel. Now I can then put a bottom on this, put a top on, whatever it might be. But really this is the essence of this video is how to make this part. Well, that glue is well and truly dried overnight, so I can now take my masking tape off and uh, see how it looks. Well, that was pretty easy to do, and I'm really pleased with the way that looks. It's, it's pretty neat, considering it was done so quickly and with so little fuss. Now my, my Capex is a pretty accurate uh, bit of kit. I've had it a long time and I love it. Uh, but if you're setting up your own mitre saw, make sure that your bevel angle is spot on before you cut all these pieces. And um, well, what am I gonna do with this now? Um, pencil pot for the workshop perhaps? Now I could marry it up with the uh, 10 sided uh, piece I made using the UJK half protractor. Um, I'm not sure. Now if you decide you want to have tools on the outside using magnets like these 
The magnets I use are these and they're 12 millimetres in diameter and they're approximately five and a half millimetres deep. And I've chose that size because a 12 millimetre force and a bit going down five and a half millimetres is a piece of cake. And I then uh, mix up a tiny bit of araldite uh, to go in the hole first and then push the magnet in. And you can clamp the magnet in place whilst the araldite's going off uh, if you need to just in case there's a hydraulic effect of the glue pushing the magnet back out again. Well, I've, I've put a bottom on this, it's just a buckshy piece of wood left over, and I'm putting all these in there, and I've got a place for my glue sticks now, and that's gonna go on the shelf behind me. Many thanks for watching, take care, bye-bye. <laughs>